Hello, Mike Irwin here, aka Mir, with a quick one on side chaining. I've received a lot of requests from people asking how do you side chain in Logic, so I thought I'd do a tutorial on the subject. Now, by side chaining, you can be talking about a lot of different things, but these days, most commonly, it's referred to as that pumping or ducking effect using a compressor. I've got a project here, and I want the bass sound to have that pumping effect, so we're going to set that up and show you guys how that's done. Uh, here's what it sounds like without the sidechain compression. Okay, long solid notes there, not a lot of movement. Um, all right, so first we need to create an audio file. Just new file, audio, input doesn't matter, create. So now we need a source for the side chain and simplest source to use is a bass drum. I'm gonna go over here and click open media and I've already got a folder selected where I've got some drum sounds. There you go, something kind of sharp and quick like that is pretty good. So I'm gonna just drag that here. And you can literally use any sound on your hard drive as long as it's just kind of a sharp transient. It really doesn't have a bass drum because at the end of the day, we're not really going to hear this in the mix at all. So I'm going to drop this down on quarter notes. I've got quarter notes selected here as my division. So that's where my lines are in my DAW. So um, just holding down option, click and drag. All right, so got those there. Okay, now we don't want to hear those, but we do want to use them as a source for the, for the side chain input. So what we can do is we can literally go down here and go to the stereo output of that track, and you can give it no output. So now we don't hear it in the mix. Great. So back to our little bass track. And I'll just right here, because this is a Logic tutorial, I will use the Logic compressor. God, that thing's huge. Anyway, um, first thing you gotta do is set the sidechain source. Over here in the top bar is sidechain. And you can see right here, audio 20, it's got the name of our kick wave that we threw down, and that's going to be the source we want to use. Select it. I hit play, see what we've got. A little bit of movement, but not enough. I've actually kind of poking around with this in the past. I like this one better. I'm not sure why. It just seems to work better. And you can, you know, just hit play, start tweaking with settings. The first thing you're going to do is just crank threshold. So immediately that gives the, the very strong you know, gain reduction ratio. Somewhere around 2 to 1 works pretty good. You don't want any makeup gain. Now, um, knee, just start somewhere middle. It doesn't really impact the sound that much. So that raised our volume quite a bit. We want to lower the output there. And now what you can kind of do is play with the attack and the release to kind of shape the movement. That's kind of the right movement. But if you can tell, I'll solo it here and you can hear this kind of a little bit of a click. And if you get that, that usually means the attack is too sharp. So you can take this knob and, and put it, put just go extreme. And 
I think that's a pretty good setting right there. Actually, I like that. So uh, let's get this out of the way. Give that a listen. Yeah, sounds good. So uh, anyway, that's a very quick tutorial on side chained compression. Um, hope you found that helpful. Check out the links below, uh, Facebook, SoundCloud, subscribe, you know, and uh, hopefully I'll be back at you pretty soon with some more tutorials. Thanks a lot for tuning in.